Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Church. My name is Joey Heath Mason and I am the United Methodist Campus Minister at American University. As you can probably guess by my lovely background, this is our Thanksgiving edition. So let me also add that I hope and pray that regardless of how you're gonna be spending the coming holiday, that you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Now I invite you to prepare for worship through prayer. Would you pray with me? Extravagant, generous giver of all good things, just as you brought the Israelites into a land flowing with milk and honey, a land where they could be free from bondage and oppression, you have met us in this good land. A land of potential and possibility, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and corn, of fertile plains and majestic mountains. A land where ideas of freedom and equity and justice can grow and thrive if we will all commit to nurture them. We give you thanks for the bounty that fills our tables, for the water that satisfies our thirst, for the beauty of this land, for the freedom we possess, where we are free to worship you as we enter into worship now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. As we approach Thanksgiving this coming week, it might be easy to ask, what is there to be thankful for? And I would wager that most folks wouldn't blame you. 2020 has been a difficult year. 
And with COVID, many families will not be gathering as they normally would around that common table. We are not celebrating our annual community Thanksgiving tonight. We aren't even able to gather in the same space and give thanks to God tonight. And if I'm being honest, as I sat down to write this, I kept thinking to myself how careful I have to be to not sound trite or cliche as I share, which is certainly easy to do any year around Thanksgiving. And this year feels like it is even more important to be aware. To say give thanks to God in all things is theologically correct. But how do we do that when it hasn't felt like a year to give thanks? I hear the line over and over in my head of Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5 saying, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul was wrapping up his first letter to the church at Thessalonica and giving his final instructions. I hear an upbeat Paul, an encourager, saying that in all things, remember to give thanks. Well, Paul maybe didn't live through COVID. But, you know, he certainly lived through his own challenges. This new faith community was a small minority that has an ethos that threatens the status quo. And Paul was one of the big voices out there sharing this good news. In fact, it landed him in prison. Paul, even when he was rebuking a bit, was always encouraging and challenging communities to be better. Now, given all that, I have to believe that Paul was not tone deaf in this reminder to give thanks in all things. He really meant it. And meant it for times like these. I believe that comes from Paul's belief in God. A firm grasp on the creator of the universe honed by his upbringing as a Jewish person. First, turning to a prophet that might not be on your list, Habakkuk, who said, Through, though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Both texts are pointing to a similar train of thought. First, that when life is hard, when things have been challenging, Habakkuk tells us, even in those times, when things seem at their lowest, still we rejoice. And why? As the psalmist tells us from our scripture this evening, because the God whose strength established the mountains, who silenced the roaring seas of Tolman, the God, the same God, remains with us today. God remains with us in all times and places, and that is why we give our thanks and we rejoice. And that is why Paul tells us to rejoice always. Paul was saying that God is good all the time, even in the hard times. Paul believes that the goodness of God isn't negated because the world is on fire. Throughout history, festivals and holidays have been used to mark having survived, especially when we think about the harvest festivals. These were not celebrations because everything had gone perfectly, but that they had made it through to the end of the season. It was giving thanks for another season, regardless of the successes, giving thanks that even with the world on fire, we can still gather together, even if only in a virtual world. 
And it is a reminder that even in difficult times, we can find things to give thanks for. I'm reminded of a conversation that I was having with one of my closest friends last weekend. We were talking about how in some parts of the country there were rumors of lockdowns coming again and how in some spaces uh, the shelves were beginning to be cleared, especially that one thing that we cannot live without, toilet paper. For those of you that don't know, I typically take Mondays as my day off and Sundays are work days. Mondays have also become my day to run errands and specifically go grocery shopping. And as I was making my list this week, my mind drifted back to that conversation. I thought about the images of empty shelves that we had shared and I admitted I was feeling a bit nervous, recalling the empty shelves back in the spring. To get to the point, I walked in the store and guess what I found? The shelves were actually full. And specifically, the toilet paper aisle was full. Fast forward a bit and the same friend texted me some bad news that they had received. So I thought I would share my small victory of the day. And she reminded me of something. Small victories are still a blessing. Sometimes life is hard and blessings are hard to come by, but even the small victories are blessings. When posterity looks back at the year 2020, there is gonna be so much to point to about what went wrong or just bad. But there are also countless ways in which we have experienced small blessings. A commercial that reminded us that we are all going through this together. Healthcare workers, though struggling themselves, show up every day to care for others. A wedding that happened so different than was originally planned, but still beautiful and filled with love. And of course, finding toilet paper at the store for the first time in weeks. Little blessings. So as we approach the holiday on Thursday, remember that the God whose strength established the mountains, the God who silences the tumult of the sea, the God who has walked with us through every step, inviting us to lean on the Holy Spirit when we are feeling not strong enough to stand on our own. Count on these blessings from God and give thanks. Rejoice always for the God who has created all things is with us and will not abandon us, even in our darkest moments. God is good and God's goodness is not negated because the world is on fire. And for that blessing, we give thanks. Amen. Good evening, Marcus Jean here, and I will be offering a prayer this evening. Please pray with me. Oh, gracious God, thank you for life and breath. Thank you for all that we have to be thankful for. Help us to see those things when we get too busy. Help us to slow down to acknowledge your grace in our lives. Help us to count our blessings. Grant us fresh vision to see this world through your eyes. Give us grateful hearts despite all that can bring us despair. Let our gratitude be infectious 
so infectious that it brings someone else in our family, in our community, or even one of our friends to the same gratitude. Remind us of your faithfulness when we forget. Give us the strength to extend grace when we don't want to. We pray for safety during this holiday season and ask that you grant us wisdom during these times. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God give you wisdom and revelation. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened. May you know the hope to which God has called you. And may the blessings of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer go with you this day and always. Amen.